What is up everyone, Talon here, and today I'm going to be going over some of the things that I'm going to pack and look for when going to any type of airsoft event or excursion, stuff like that, um, and things that you maybe need to consider for packing as well. Now, something that I have lost in my transition from working at the airsoft headquarters to um, doing now my own thing is my own packing list for a lot of these airsoft events. And so because I've lost that, I am now in need of another physical print or reference sheet for what should be included as I pack and travel around with a lot of my airsoft kit. And I think that that would be super advantageous to not only have to show you, but also give you that principal PDF uh, in order for you to reference for your uh, own packing as well. I have seen in trying to find online another packing list, just super, super general, like not even specific, like, hey, maybe you should pack your rifle, your backup rifle, your pistol. It's just pack your airsoft guns. Like it's not a comprehensible like list of things to reference. So I think that this would be super advantageous to provide for you guys. So again, I'm going to be traveling this upcoming weekend to Operation Arsenal. This is technically in the past. I need to think of what's happening in the future. Operation Arsenal hosted by American Milsim at MUTC in Southern Indiana. So I'm going to provide you guys the list and let's kind of get started with, with loosely packing. I'm kind of getting stuff uh, organized and figured out. So like I was saying before, I used to have a physical a sheet that I had printed off that was even laminated so I could take a dry erase marker and even physically mark down what I was throwing into my gear bag, what was not being thrown in, stuff like that. So I currently don't have a laminator, but we can always cheat by utilizing our own phones, uh, which I've already gotten that PDF onto my phone. And the, it's gonna look, so you can see there, that's the list that I'm gonna be referencing as I pack uh, with you guys. So what I've done is I've organized this airsoft packing list into a couple of different categories. Our base layer, our tactical layer, uh, rifles and pistols, uh, consumption, quality of life materials, and then just extra stuff that things that I've considered um, that you might want to consider as well. Now this I've, I just made literally in the last 15 minutes. So I already know that I'm missing stuff. I've already made notes of stuff that I've missed just by walking down here, looking at things that I know I would want to pack. Um, so you'll get a more complete uh, list uh, when I share it with you guys. So the base layer. What I've also done on this list is I have bolded the items that I have personally missed in prior events. So those are things that I'm going to make extra sure that I don't miss for future events and things that maybe you need to consider as well. Oh, I see something in the background that I need to add as well. So the base layer is pretty self-explanatory. Clothes that you wear to location. So that would be early in the morning, your jeans, your shirt, flip-flops, whatever have you. So those are things that you would change out of before you actually get onto the field and start playing. Pants, shirts, like this here. And this is typically my bag that I would throw everything into, but I would lay everything out before it goes into the bag uh, so I can physically see the, uh, the stuff that is all going in there. If, if we're traveling to an event, that might lead to um, maybe a separate luggage case or some extra um, small things that would go inside of here. Two extra pairs of jeans, extra t-shirts, stuff like that something that you won't necessarily wear to location, then your tactical layer. So that's gonna be all this stuff that's going to go up over your base layer. And of course, base layer equipment is going to change dependent on your location and your situation. This is going to be based on the event that I'll be participating in. This would change from uh, maybe an early spring event or a late fall event where I would want something that's gonna be a little bit more thermal, or if I were to go to Operation Copperhead um, out in the desert in the middle of summer where it gets incredibly hot, that would be a separate set of uh, base layers entirely. 
dead reg, dead reg and dead light. Two very, very different things and both equally as important. So I have here dead reg. I've got a, a light here from PTS. That's going to be my red light. And that's going to sit on top of my helmet just like that. I also need to redo the elastics of this helmet. This is the importance of packing well before an event, or at least getting stuff laid out before the event so you know what to add to your daily list of things to do before, like the day or a couple days before the event, when everything starts to become really pressurized and you're like, oh my God, what happened to everything? Um, so I know that I need to do some elastic with that. And I'm not at there yet, but I'm going to throw here quickly your medical kit. This is always so important, your boo-boo kit. Your boo-boo kit should always be either on you in a small system like this or in a bag that is at the FOB. If it's a really large event like American Mill Sims or Mill Sim West or whatever have you. Otherwise, if it's a pickup game, it'll either be in your gear bag if you're indoors or at your car, if you're at an outdoor field. So my radio is in one of my MC Kydex rack carriers. I need to change over the mounting system and the radio to the one that I'm gonna be wearing for this event, which is going to be my green camoed one. So I'm gonna put both of those things again in the middle here in order to uh, remind me, those are things that need to get swapped out and changed over. Pack primary rifle. This is gonna be my primary rifle for the event. Pretty much just as is, excluding the magazine. My backup is going to be, I'm gonna make it this, uh, this KWA rifle, my KWA T10. So I'm going to um, go out, test fire both of these, make sure they're accurate and they're on, and I'm gonna make sure that they're feeding with uh, two fives and two eights. So I have here primary and secondary rifle system. Um, you always make sure that you've got your accessories mounted to them. I'm just going to hot swap my uh, high rise T1 and the flip to center magnifier from my um, primary onto my secondary just to keep things consistent. However, I will need to change the flashlight on this guy because it is DED dead. But both will take the same type of magazines, the AEG uh, PTS magazines. Uh, they'll also take the same power source, my Titan lithium powers, lithium ion, and um, yeah, just keep everything consistent other than the base rifle itself. Your consumption. Things that will go primarily in your fob bag to resupply you if you need to go back to the fob, such as your snacks, water or water bottle. So snacks would be uh, Cliff Bars or um, real cheap uh, like Pop-Tarts. Uh, you're gonna want something that's pretty natural, nothing that's going to be too processed, um, unless it's like the healthy Cliff Bars. I have here a water bottle that I will fill up at the Airbnb and then this fun little Amazon attachment is actually a, a water hose, so I can screw in my Nalgene to this. I can undo it one lid, and now it's the same footprint as a normal uh, 12 ounce uh, water bottle. So if I run out of water in here, and I don't want to refill it, I can just grab those uh, cheap water bottles that uh, players will always pick up and Walmart has like a 24 pack for like 12 or 15 bucks uh, and those are easy enough to have either in a fob bag or someone would be running around with one and I can resupply there. Toilet paper. It is not, I can almost guarantee 100% of the time every event the porta johns or even the uh, facility bathrooms will run out of toilet paper at some time or another. Having your own stash of toilet paper or wet wipes is a pro gamer move. Some extra stuff that I think that you should consider is going to be the event map, a radio channel card. 
So as I have my, my radio, I'm the type of player that when I'm wearing my plate carrier, I've got the radio right here, front right. I open it up, but I don't know exactly what channel I need to get to. And I don't want to pull my phone out to go through the emails to see what channel uh, command is on versus what my buddy squad is. So I'll have a pre-written cheat sheet that sits up here. I pull that out and I immediately go, all right, I need Victor 3, channel number, bah, 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 bah. and I've already got it. I close this, slip this back into here, and if we're throughout the day, you know how many times every event I hear someone behind me or in the room going, hey, what's the channel for command? Guess what? I've got the channel for command immediately available right here because that dude didn't prepare. And that's gonna be the end of the list. So add everything a la carte. It's a relatively smaller list, um, but I will say that I have forgotten to add ace bandages, barrel socks, anti-fog. If you guys can think of anything that I may be missing, let me know. We do have still a little bit of time before the end of the video. Um, I wanna show you kind of what I'm looking for when I take these airsoft rifles out for um, physical checks for accuracy and consistency before they're actual uh, passable for the uh, location. So let's go do that really quick. It's not my car, I'm just borrowing it. I'm so bad I forgot my iPro. But we're gonna be testing out here in this uh, open field here what the different uh, BB weights are going to do um, with the rifles that I have selected here for the event. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be setting this piece of paper up on my little, uh, my little mic stand here. And what I'm looking at is this piece of paper here happens to be about, um, without the head, a Bravo size IPSC target. Maybe a Charlie size with the width being a little bit wider. Um, I'm gonna try to shoot this at 100 and 200 feet, both freehand and uh, against a rest here. So that's gonna be pretty standard for what most Milsim events are. I'm freestanding because I'm of the opinion that I'm gonna be standing or moving and shooting at all of these events. Um, we're gonna test the, uh, the hop up as well as what the distance is gonna be at the BB weights um, at the different distances. And I'm gonna decide if I wanna shoot two fives or two eights. Um, one thing to mention as well to you guys is, um, I'm looking at a smaller target here just because, um, you know, if I can hit a torso at those distances. I'm really confident that uh, with most airsofters being a little bit larger of a, of a profile than I am, um, that I'll have no problem uh, hitting other players at those distances. So that's what I'm looking for with this size of target. We're gonna try out the different BB weights, uh, adjusting the hop up. Um, I'm all gonna spend more time on my primary rifle than my secondary rifle and talk you through what I'm thinking of as I make those adjustments. So here we've got my rifle, shoots pretty good. I just got this chronode, uh, shoots about 397, 396. Um, so it's right at that uh, limit um, for our event. I'm gonna shoot off the side of our target first. Never mind, that went right at it. I hit it a couple times. Okay, I feel actually really, really, really good about that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try some uh, two eights now. Thank you. 
And actually, I probably should explain. When I'm testing for the uh, BB weights, I'm looking for the 2.5 and 2.8 specifically, uh, so I can use them in conjunction with my secondary rifle and pistol. <sighs> I personally get really, really, really annoyed when I have to carry too much stuff. So too much stuff could be I do a 3.2 or a 3.0 for my primary, 2.8 for my secondary rifle, which shoots a little bit lower velocity, and maybe a 2.0 or a 2.5 for my pistol, right? Now I've got three different models that I have to try to keep track of when I should just get one big bottle that can service both my rifles and my pistol. I just load the one BB into, into all of them and I don't have to really be concerned with all the other stuff. However, we're all busy people um, doing side stuff, my own video projects, uh, working full time and then doing all these video things. It takes a lot out of me. And so here, I'm gonna be doing it with a, with two eights now, let's see how they do. Okay, that was standing. I'm gonna brace now. Uh -oh. Okay, so I can tell at this distance, there are some pretty mad inconsistencies. Um, and I'm using my magnifier, my flip to center magnifier to better identify where those inconsistencies are. So at the, the roughly 100 feet that I've got that target set up at, um, there's probably, if, if my body represents where that target is, there's how I have the hop up set up, about a four to six inch lift on the BB. And there's a weird variance of, um, I would probably say uh, six inches left to right of where I'm about aiming. Granted, I don't have batteries in my optics, so I can't see exactly where the red dot is. Um, it's a smooth ball bearing going through a smooth bore, so there's gonna be a lot of inconsistencies anyway. However, that seems to be a little bit more consistent or more inconsistent compared to the two fives. And it's actually backwards from what it should be because a heavier projectile with its mass should carry its, uh, its energy along a more linear flight path. It should, at least, um, but it's not exactly doing that. Okay, let's make an adjustment to where our target is, where our camera is, and where I'll be shooting from. We'll try this at a little bit farther distance. So I just wanna point out that our target with this lens I already zoomed in, granted it's only 75 millimeters, but at the end of my fingertip, that's what we're aiming at. That little Bravo sized uh, piece of paper or cardboard is what we're aiming at. So it's about 200 feet away, maybe 180, uh, just because I couldn't get all the way out to 200 um, into the woods there. Um, I've got it raised up as high as it'll go on my little paper stand there. So I'm gonna be resting on here with this guy, trying two fives and two eights, um, and just see where we're going. Holy fucking shit, boys, I am so goddamn hot. But you know what, it's gonna be even hotter down at Arsenal, and I'm a skinny boy, I'm not fat like everyone else, so I shouldn't be complaining nearly as much. All right, let's give this a try. So I'm gonna stand, try to see where they're going right now. Give it some arch. Okay, I for sure cannot see where that's going. Hat back. Okay, that's definitely not happening. So, Oh my goodness, my selector is also getting loose on me. I might have to disassemble this and get this figured out sooner than later. Let's see if we can make magic happen. Went way left. That one went way right. I'm trying to hold it in the same spot. 
I want as close as down the middle as possible, but it was still about eight inches left of the target. Nope. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna dump some rounds. I should also mention I'm aiming probably a good, and that target's six foot tall right now, maybe five feet above the target. Just trying to get something to connect. Also, look at the selector. It's way moving on me. Not great. So I'm not gonna futz with that anymore. I'll take it apart back of the house and try to get it back together. Okay, I'm gonna run down there. Let's go down there and see if we made any impacts. So I'm walking up on my piece of paper here and make a quick adjustment for you guys. And currently no impacts. This would maybe be the closest to an impact that I've got, but it's, I'm not 100%, you know, um, just because we've got other cracks here from uh, BB impacts. Oh wait. <gasps> Oh, so we did, we did hit it, because all of these other ones are impacts of BBs when we did it at 100 feet. So that's all of our impacts, and all of those up there correlate to uh, hits on the other side, which means this one, that one right there, that was an actual hit. We were able to hit our paper from way over there, if it'll focus. Come on, buddy. There we go. So from way over there, we did get a single hit. Oh yeah, that's what's up. But let's see if we can do even better with .25s. So we've identified on the primary rifle that I need to utilize two eights. So two fives, we're just gonna throw off to the side there and we're gonna use uh, two eights. For the sake of time and ease, um, I have not taken the optic and magnifier off of my primary system like I would intend to do should something happen with my primary after I fix it tonight um, in order to make this usable, more usable um, at the event. So all I'm gonna do today is try to get to the best that I can to a styled in with my Kitty Boy T10 um, I went and chronoed this one as well. This one's shooting around 360 feet per second. It's supposed to be my uh, indoor and at an indoor setup. So I'm not sure why it's about 10 FPS over what it's supposed to be. But it actually uh, might be a little more consistent compared to my 400 FPS rifle. Okay, okay, I'm gonna reset the camera up. Would you believe me if I told you that it was way overcast this morning, even about an hour ago, yet the sun is uh, out and way bright, and you know, it was like 57 when I left the house, 57 degrees. Um, I don't know what it is right now, but wearing black, and a plate carrier, not a smart move on my end, not a smart move. What the fuck's wrong with you? All right, so I need hop up a touch, up a smidge. Up a little bit more. Up even more. Okay, that's pretty flat. We want a little bit of arch at the very end of the travel. A little bit more. That's ideal. Did you hear that? I don't think you heard that. 
but I shot six times and it was between, I did four shots on the paper in conjunction and then two shots hit the metal pole by accident. Um, so this somehow is more consistent at 100 feet than my primary rifle at 400 feet which I've, I've also tested this out and I've kind of put this to, to rest. I'm gonna put that back in the distance and we're gonna explore this real quick. All right, so what I did now was move the target out to 200, circled all the impacts that we had at 100. So any new impacts will be with this setup. I've also taken just the magnifier off from the other rifle, slapped it onto here. Um, and that is good enough and we'll see if I can get any impacts here. Um, I'm not exactly holding my breath, but I'm a little bit more excited than I used to be. So let's try it out. That was pretty straight. I see that the target is blowing a little bit more in the wind. I also see that the BBs are curving a little more to the right with the wind. That's actually a pretty cool uh, just shooting bench right there. What I'm gonna do is uh, try to get my knee down and stabilize like I was. Okay, target's flat. Already the BB flight path is way straighter. I was seeing a bunch of BBs land, or um, like the, the, the body of the BB passed in front of the target, so they're in line with the target. I don't think that it's going the distance. Let's go, let's go check it out though. So leading up to the target, I can already see in the grass here, a bunch of BBs. There's one right there. There's another one right there. And I'm seeing them sprinkled all around here, leading up to the target right there. So I'm seeing a bunch right here as well. So they're all in the ground right until about the foot of the target. So any new impacts, I'm not really seeing any new impacts. Here are all the circled ones from the 100 foot test, but not anything that would indicate um, anything of distance. I will say, <clears throat> I will say that I was seeing more consistency in the BB flight path with the KWA T10 compared to uh, my Mark One or my Mod One, excuse me which makes me think maybe I need to go with the KW way. The fact that it's more consistent doesn't require me to take it apart in order to get it fixed, bugs. Um, and maybe I just need to pack like an EVE 9, my EVE 9, or maybe an MP5 instead of, instead of my, my Mod 1. That's what I'm thinking right now. I think that makes the most sense. What do you guys think? Going with the KWA uh, T10, even though it shoots 360 feet per second, it's giving me the same consist better consistency and about the same distance as my, my Mod 1, the, my VFC Mod 1. Granted, I have changed a bunch of stuff on my VFC. I've changed less things on the KWA. Maybe that's where my, my issue lies. Maybe I'm not as good of a tech as I thought it was. But I think the proof is in the pudding. I need to go with two eights and not two fives. And, and it's a pistol anyway, which is the other thing that I'm considering as well. Um, trying to keep a, a lower BB weight for my pistol. That doesn't matter a whole lot because I'm supposed to be closer than average anyway for emergency pistol usage. So I could get away with a two eight. I've done it before. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm thinking I'm gonna pack the T10 as my primary system, and then I'm going to allocate the EVE 9 as my emergency backup. I think that makes the most sense. I had to transition arms there. Um, 
So that's what I have. Now my mind is running with thoughts and ideas. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick to that. Um, I'm gonna change some things over on the T10. I gotta get a sling on there. I need to get my optic system onto the T10. I gotta get it recited in for the T10. And I need to get the Eve 9 in battle ready shape as well. It's already pretty battle ready. Uh, but that's what we've got. Stay tuned for actual at the Airbnb. I'm gonna beat up, meet up with my buddy Logan um, and go over their configurations. I'm also gonna meet up with uh, my other uh, group as well, try to get some of their rifle setups as well, their thoughts on the event. Um, try to fly the drone, try to get some shots, um, but who knows? Um, AMS is gonna be a little finicky in that regard because it is a training facility and the government doesn't want too much exposed but that's what we have if you guys have any further questions put them down into the comment section below i'll do my best to answer them um, but we are all set here so you guys take care stay safe stay positive and i'll see you guys in the next one take care